You guys ready to see the first painting in our museum? Let's take a look. Our first painting is uh, painted by Sandra Botsili, and the title of the piece is Venus and Mars. It was painted in 1485 on tempora and was used, and he used oil. Now if we take a closer look at the painting, uh, we can tell that it was made during the Renaissance time period. Uh, one interesting fact of this artist is that, the, that Botticelli's creatures are free of air with no blemishes, particularly perfect in all of his paintings. As we can see right in here, um, the figures are almost pure. This would seem appropriate for this painting because Botticelli is painting of Greek gods. However, this, is, this theme of his painting remains perfect throughout his works. As seen here, the overall symbolism of the piece is that love conquers wrath and anger. The goddess of love, Venus, and the god of war destruction, and destruction, Mars, is put to sleep or mastered, while the fawns or satyrs of Venus are merely mocking how Mars is asleep, and the satyrs are playing with all of his equipment. A quote that I got from Wolf and Milene in a, a book that I checked out was that in union they form a discordia concurs. The descendant, the Desonance, which is a part of every perfect harmony. So therefore, the meaning of this painting is that love is greater than even the most torturous of foes and that it conquers everything. Ready to go see the next one? Let's go. This is our second piece. Um, it's one of my personal favorites. It's called The Last Supper. Um, it was painted by Leonardo da Vinci on a wall in Milan um, in 1495 to 1497. Because it was so large and because Leonardo was so minute, um, it took him a while to complete it and he was a little bit of a procrastinator. Um, so it took him a couple years. But um, if we want to take a closer look, we can uh, dive into it. It was obviously during the Renaissance time period. Uh, many, pain many painters emerged, but da Vinci was one that was well known. Um, this painting in particular was significant because it was the first painting portraying the events leading up to Jesus proclaiming to his twelve disciples that one of them would portray him by sunrise. The true symbolism and what people can get out of the paintings come from the gestures, body movements, but more importantly the hands of his disciples. In the Renaissance time period, hand gestures can be read as if they were coming from the dictionary. The three disciples to the left of the painting and holding up their hand motioning a stop gesture. The next disciple is leaning over the other two closest to Jesus and is obviously angry. Jesus remains calm in the middle and it appears, thanks to the background of the door frame, that the light is shining on him. The disciple that is pointing up his finger would symbolize agitation towards Jesus and the other three are searching for answers with the disciple on the end of the table. From this symbolism, I think the painting's meaning lies in the fact that Jesus is the calm of the storm and the human race is destined for chaos when trial or tribulation is set before them. Let's keep going. Moving on to the next one. This is our third uh, piece that I chose. Uh, it is also another one of my favorites. It is The Last Supper by Jacobo uh, Tornorito. Tin um, I'm sorry, I probably butchered the name, but um, I particularly like this painting because it was a remake of the original Last Supper. Um, this one was made in uh, 1592 to 94. It also was on uh, a large scale, about 12 foot by 18 and a half foot. Um, so if we want to take a closer look, we can uh, tell the differences between the original and this copy. Um, Basically, this painting was in a different time period than the original was. Um, it was in the mannerism time period. Instead of the di disciples being the focal point to the symbolism predicting the meaning of the painting, the symbolism actually lies in the light, color, movement, space, and composition. Obviously, one of the symbols of light is the fact that it is being exemplified on Jesus, showing that Jesus is the ultimate light in this painting. And it's very strong as the light is casting a shadow on the woman that is kneeling in front of the painting. One thing to note is Note is that there are only two light sources in this painting, Jesus and the light fixture in the top corner. To my eyes, it looks like angels are flying towards it and around the room. The last thing that I will note is that there really isn't a background, and the painting just goes into a dark, dank tunnel.
that looks like it leads to nothing. Through this, through these symbols, it would be evident that Tin Torito is showing the importance of Jesus in a dark in dark situations, and that he is the ultimate light to lead you out of it. There's a lot more about this painting to discuss, but the other symbols in reality, I think, are just indicators to the point that I just made. The significance of this painting is to show the growth in spiritual di divinity and how art has changed by comparing the original Last Supper to this one. Now let's move on to the fourth one. This is our fourth painting. Um, it is the Battle of Isis by Alberti Al Fedors, Al Fedors for, um, I probably butchered the name, but it was made in 1525, and it it was very important and caught my eyes because of everything that's going on in this painting. It was uh, during the Mannerism period, as well as uh, the Last Supper that we just looked at, and if we want to take a closer look, I can uh, explain a little bit better. Um, the importance of this piece is that the battle scene showing the defeat of Darius by Alexander the Great. However, since the, the, this is a Mannerist art piece, the light, movement, and co composition is what is really important about this painting. The swirling and numerous amounts of people shows the chaos and the depth of just how intense the battle was, along with the light that is nefarious in some corners, but subsides with the light from the sun. From the scenery, I assume that the symbolism of this piece is that although the battle was dark at times, in the end it brought about good fortunes with the dawning of a new day. Couldn't find much on this um, through my research, so... That's all I have, but uh, we'll keep moving and we'll go on to our fifth one. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is another Albert Aldorfer painting. Um, it was painted in 1520, um, and it is called the Danube Landscape. Um, basically, if we want to look closer, was significant to the Mannerist time period because it was the first landscape painting of just nature with no humans at the focal point. Obviously this opens up a lot of different perspectives for other artists to paint on how they view nature. This painting drew attention to my eye because of the center of the painting is a castle, and usually castles are very large. However, in this painting the castle almost disappears in nature and the beauty of the castle is overpowered by the elegance of the nature that surrounds it. The lighting and composition of the painting obviously portrays a very calm and happy mood to the viewers and would thus help symbolize how important nature is to the artist. What I think Aldorfer is trying to tell the viewers is that no matter how big the human product is, the elegance and flow of nature will overpower it and de deserves to be portrayed in a positive and magnificent reality. That's it for this painting. Um, let's go on to our sixth one. My sixth piece is called Death and the Three Ages of Woman. It is by Hans Balding Green, and it was painted in uh, 1510. If we want to take a closer look, we can tell that the painting was on oil on limewood. Um, based off the time period, which is the Mannerist um, time period, I would assume that the gestures and body symbolize Um, based on the time period, I would guess that this is a mannerist piece of art. However, I feel that the gestures and body symbolism would portray more a more Renaissance depiction. Based on my interpretation, it would seem that this painting is showing the stages of a woman's life. In the beginning, you can't wait to get out of the wraps that you are entangled in, symbolizing your youth. Once you mature into adulthood, you are overwhelmed with what you have become and are consumed by your own beauty. However, this doesn't last and ends up withering away to the lady on the left. The old lady that is almost in the bones, holding an hourglass, is symbolizing the time that death is waiting for the young girl. Therefore, what I think the artist is meaning by this painting is not to be consumed with looks and appearance, because those will fade over time. Let's keep moving. On to the seventh. Our seventh piece is Christ and the High Priest. It is made by Garrett von Honthorst 
1617. Uh, it was painted with oil on a canvas. We want to take a closer look. The movement that this painting in is from the Baroque is from Baroque, Baroque art, which is a period in art that used extravagant motion and clear detail to portray drama, tension, and the mood of different styles of art. In this particular piece, of the clarity of the painting sets up the scene perfectly. Ponthorst was known for his many candlelight paintings, and in this particular painting, he uses the candle in the center of the painting to exuberate the effect of the conversation between the high priest and, the, and Jesus. Almost like the conversation is private between the two. This statement is valid because of the lighting on Jesus and the high priest while the bystanders are in the shadows and merely overlooking what is going on. When Jesus is painting, you see a recurring theme of light. In this particular example, I think the candlelight is symbolizing peace of the conversation, which also serves to heighten the tension based on the facial expressions that are lit up by the light. That is it. Let's move on to our eighth. This is the Goldfinch by Carl or Carillo uh, Fabriitis. Fabriitis. Um, it was painted in 1654 on, or on wood, and he used oil to paint it. Uh, if we look closer, basically, Fabriitis was a student of Rembrandt, another Baroque artist that had paintings that were very dark. But his paintings, uh, talking about Carl Fabriitis were very different from his teacher in the aspects of light and lights, light colors. The color scheme makes this painting appear coolly realistic and tranquil. This piece is significant to the time period because it is one of the few pieces of art recovered from an explosion that ended up killing Fabri Titus when he was very young. The similar symbolism of this piece is open-ended. Many Baroque artists would use slant, slant boxes like the one in this picture to draw a sense of mystery to it, making the viewer determine what was inside the box. The chain that is attached to the bird would, could be Fabritidis' attempt to show how man is trying to domesticate beautiful animals and hinder them from their natural abilities, like flight in this example. However, this appears to be open-ended, and the true meaning behind the painting would be in the eyes of the viewer. Last one, here we go, number 10. Oh, this is the Battle of the Amazons. This is my eighth piece. Um, I was very drawn by it because uh, Peter Paul Rubens made it. Um, his name is brought up a lot when talking about the time period, which was in 1615, which uh, this particular painting was made in. Um, it was used and painted with oil on wood. Um, if we look closer, this painting is from the Baroque art movement. And it would make sense based on its extravagant sense of motion. To me, it looks as though there is no significance between the individuals and that each fight, with, whether it's animals, elements, or humans, they all run together, almost creating a unity between everything. The color scheme tends to run together as well and appears very nefarious, with the smoke and water being very dark. What I think the meaning of this piece of art is that in war, everything ends up running together, and the only thing that is expressed in the end is the victor or that all war leads to a river, a river of death which can be seen in the back end of the painting near the bottom of under the bridge. Two more. Number nine. Here we go.